generations are buying up the world. And in a few years, there's just going to be a few companies that own all these other different food companies. So we're trying to raise awareness of, of what they own. And there's the big, you know, the, the big five, the ConAgra's and the, the PepsiCo's that are buying up all these other different companies. So we're try, trying to raise awareness of what they own and to, to boycott their products. Um, sort of the way that I see international environmentalism um, is that it's sort of a tough question because environmentalism it sort of it works best when it's really grassroots and it sort of grows in a community um, and sort of thrives within that and obviously you know you can't petition some other country's legislator you know you gotta you know work for laws in your country but the the hard part about that is that you know um, trees don't just supply oxygen from the rainforest to Brazil to people in Brazil you know um, when you put a carcinogen into the air, that carcinogen doesn't say, oh, I'm gonna stay in this country, you know, I'm gonna stay here because this is where I came from. Or like when somebody dumps something into the ocean, it doesn't only stay in, you know, waters belonging to that country, it, it hits everybody. So, um, environmentalism on an international scale is really important that people sort of get onto the same page, you know, um, Eric was talking about companies that you know own huge conglomerates all over the world, and environmentalists have to be just as united um, for important causes if they want to be able to convince those companies to be more um, environmentally conscious. You know, we've got to exchange ideas. We've got to talk about what works with other groups while still staying, you know, local and staying, you know, effective on a community stage. If that answers the question. So how do you do that? Um, things like the internet are really good tools. You know, um, obviously it doesn't make sense to every time you have an idea, hop on an airplane um, and you know go to every single organization that you want to have communication with because that uses a ton of gas um, and just isn't very time efficient. But these um, these mass media tools that we have these days, if you can start you know Facebook or Twitter campaigns. Um, they can be really effective on a global scale. You, know, you can start something from one town that hits everywhere. And then there are things like this that really um, just sort of jump start groups. You know, sort of, this is the communication ideas right here about environmental issues. You know, we're part of that right now. There are other platforms out there, such as the Earth Day Network, I know, who, you know, it's not just during Earth Day. All year long, they provide you know information and a platform you know for people to blog and people to communicate about um, specific issues. So if there's a specific issue that you're interested in, there's many um, transnational nonprofit organizations um, and such that can help you link to those resources. Um, and I actually took a class on social media outreach, you know, getting your word across and how to start a successful campaign. And, you know, it's not as easy as you think to just start up a Facebook page for an issue and then have everyone jump on board. Um, there's things that, you know, you need to do. And if you all have Facebook, that's awesome. You know, if you create a page for your issue, you know, go and find similar pages and share those similar pages and connect with the people who already have similar interests and, you know, it's as easy as typing it into Google or typing it into the Facebook search bar, you know, and use different keywords, you know, go outside of what you would normally type in and, you know, just click, click, click till you find what you're looking for because it's probably out there. And if it's not out there, ask. Um, it never hurts to ask and I will gladly share my email and my Facebook account with any of you know, and you can ask me whatever you want. If I don't know how to answer your question, I will try to find someone who does. <laughs> yeah, one of the ways we do that is through activism. And uh, there's a com company in the U.S. called Monsanto. If you haven't heard of it, I already mentioned them. 
that there's a big march coming up on May 25th. It's being organized through the, through the nation to march against Monsanto. There's a big movement that started up last October for women from Saskatchewan uh, started up this movement called I Don't Know More, a First Nations movement to readdress and readdress and have their treaties honored that they originally signed, signed with their governments, that the governments are going in through the back door, not honoring the treaties, uh, mining for minerals on their lands without the right to do it, and to get to be part of something that's bigger than you. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of I Don't Know More in the Philippines. It is starting to spread around through the world. Uh, in New Zealand, they're starting to readdress their treaties. Uh, Australia, Canada, certain parts of the states, more, more the northern states like uh, the barren North Dakota, South Dakota uh, states were there is a heavy presence of Indian reservations, uh, but yeah, to get part, to be part of something that's bigger than your community, but actually have your community involved with it, to this whole get back to Bateson's idea of this interconnectedness throughout the world. I'm part of a movement called Global. It's mixing global issues with local issues. They're based in New York, and their office is right in front of the United Nations building. So they're trying to bring issues which are important are human rights, women, environment, indigenous people. So I think they're doing uh, great strides in trying to bring local issues and campaign them before the United Nations. So there are many ways by which you can link the local with the international, but not to forget that local issues are what we try to bring out. But then they're a common denominator among all of the issues around the world. We still want to hear from more students. Okay, please grab the mic. Okay, good afternoon. I'm just wondering, um, what are the major challenges that we would be facing as a student in promoting environmental projects? Thank you. Both high school and college high students. School. Um, well, as a high school student, there, um, there are really, there are sort of two major issues that I run into. Um, the first one's an issue that sort of anyone would hit and that's that there are, people already have a lot of preconceived ideas about the environment. And a lot of people with a lot more money than most environmental groups have have gone a long way to try to promote those ideas. Like that bottled water is you know, the cool thing to drink. Or that you know, um, Hummers or gas guzzling cars, you know, they make you tougher to have this big car. You know, um, that kind of notion. And that's something that environmentalists really have to um, have to sort of tackle head on, saying, you know, well, why is it cool to drink bottled water? That's dumb. You know, there's all these issues with it. Um, sorry to use such lofty language as dumb. Um, but then there's also the issue of being taken seriously. Um, and as someone who I've gone in and lobbied to local government officials, and when you first get in there, they're sort of thinking, oh, you know, this is a high school student who's just sort of here because, you know, they're young and blah, blah, blah. And they've got all these notions that you're just sort of not really there for a real reason. You don't really know what you're talking about. And what you've really got to do is show them that you do know what you're talking about and go in well informed um, with strong opinions and a good, um, and be ready to discuss questions that they have. Um, don't just be ready to stand there and you know, give a spiel about you know, what you think is important, but be ready to address potential concerns that other people might have. Just get as informed as you can um, to sort of, again, be taken seriously. Um, I kind of have to, to agree with him. You know, one of the biggest issues you face is um, either people that are apathetic, apathetic, they don't care, or people who don't take you seriously. Um, you know, you get 
labeled a tree hugger or hippie often, which is why I try to present myself in more of like a professional manner because that's how I feel people are going to take me seriously as opposed to if I went around wearing tie-dye shirts and cutoffs and such. So, you know, you need to um, present yourself in a professional manner and like Alex said, be informed. You need to, you know, play the devil's advocate when you're doing your research and, you know, what what is this opposing argument going to come back with, you know, um, they will have so many negative things to say. And so you really need to be informed. You can't just go in after reading a few news articles or a few research papers. You really have to know your stuff and be able to def defend it and, you know, um, think of alternative solutions. You know, someone like, yeah, but um, <laughs> I mean, that's one of the issues is just, being informed, and as far as people not caring, they, a lot of people don't care because they don't think it affects them directly. So my advice for that is to see, to find a way to make an environmental issue personal. So with the bottled water, yeah, our, the overall thing is, why, the overall reason why we're doing it is because of environmental reasons, but not everyone will really do that. But everyone will relate to, hey, I'm gonna save money if I pay five bucks, 10 bucks for this water bottle, but you know, after five refills, I'm gonna save that amount of money anyway. So, you know, find a way to make it personal, you know, when you're being active at your school or at your university, you know, just find a way to relate to fellow students who don't know as much about you as environmental issues and find a way that they can easily bring that back home or easily relate to themselves. Yeah, it's really tough when you say you were trying to get something done at the university that people are really standoffish, like you're attacking the university. It's not that we're attacking the university, we just want to make it better. And we, we have some helpful hints on how they can do that. Uh, when we tried to do the White Plains thing, People didn't want to sign a petition. They felt like it was an attack on the university. Like, I like this university. I don't want to say anything bad against the university, so I'm not going to sign a petition. Uh, we couldn't get even get any information from like health services on how many accidents are happening. They didn't want didn't want to give us any information. It was kind of like you're you're attacking the university. So, uh, same thing with the water bottle petition. Uh, I drew up the petition. I edited it five times to try to make people happy because people were like, you can't say that, you can't say that, you can't say that. And eventually, there was a couple things that we left in that people were saying, you can't say that, you can't say that. And I was like, well, we're saying that because it says on there, Popsic we mentioned Popsico. They said, you can't mention, mention Popsico because we have a contract with Popsico. I'm like, then who should we mention? If we have the contract with Popsico, why wouldn't we mention Popsico? Uh, but the, the university does make a lot of money by selling bottled water through the vending machines here, and it's a contract, and it's a, it's a business for them. And we don't get charged for that, but people do have their, one, their, their little one cards, they call them. So they can go to the vending machines and they can buy this bottle of water basically on credit through the university. And it's another thing, when they go to leave, they have these bills through their one cards that they, you know, they didn't really think about it. Or, you know, you're, you're, working, you're working out at the Chick Evans Field House and, and all the beautiful people are drinking a bottle of water, so I need to do it too type of thing, you know? And just to just create this taboo of what's right and what's wrong, and and really standing your ground. And eventually, you're gonna people are gonna say you, you can't do that, and you're gonna say you're gonna look them straight in the eye and say, you know what, I'm doing it, I'm going for it. One more thing, um, when you're when you're promoting an issue or a campaign, it's it's so easy to say this is wrong, this is bad, yada yada yada, but people re receive it a lot better when instead you're saying the alternative is positive, you know, this is better. So instead of focusing all on all the negative issues, you know, like um, 
we'll take the grass for example. Oh, grass is bad. Grass, you know, uses chemical. Grass makes the geese come here. Instead, focus on all the positives. You know, native plants. They soak up water. They reduce flooding. They facilitate, you know, natural species. Because people are gonna perceive that as better as you making more of a positive change than if you're just bad mouthing, you know, the negative. So um, that's been proven through many like psychological studies as well. Also something I learned at college. <laughs> I do learn things in school. Yeah. Um, so that'd be my final piece of advice. Um, and sort of off of that, uh, today I heard Dr. Seuss described as a personable zealot. Um, the actual person, doc, the guy, I forget his actual name, but um, and I really, that run with me as sort of a model to be, as an environmentalist and as an activist, a personable zealot, to be nice and, you know, be really friendly, you know, maybe start out with some small talk with someone, just be polite, but be sure that you get to the issues and then you make your point. Um, for example, um, and this sort of goes back to the issue of being young and, you know, how you present yourself. Um, I was lobbying Bob Pritchard, he's our state representative for our county. Um, and when I first went in there, you know, he started out, and I think that it was sort of, because I was in high school, not really asking what I was there to talk about, but asking, you know, how high school was going, and what year I was, and you know, if I had plans for college. And you know, it was really nice, and you know, I made sure that to um, have, you know, that small talk, sort of build that relationship but then don't let them sidetrack you from the issues. Be sure to then get in and, um, and be you know, strong in your commitment to your issue, but also listen to what they have to say. Listen to other people's concerns about what you're talking about, and then try to figure out a way to, um, to sort of work their ideas into your speech. You know? Be sure that you're not just talking, but that you're also listening. Can I just Yeah, I'd just like to say real quick about that is I, I think we can find common ground on just almost all issues. There's always some some place that we can find common ground on. And when we look at a smokestack and we see the plumes coming out of it, it doesn't take a scientist to know that that is not good for us. We know that all that smoke coming out is bad for us. And certain things that we can do communally, like growing food uh, in a community garden, or just grow, having a garden in your backyard with your family. Uh, you'd be surprised on how, how much it can help economically, and how much it helps people find that common ground together. Okay, that's words of inspiration from the panel. the change you wish to see in the world. You need to lead by example and you know start in your local community and then from that you can you know, even if you affect just one other person, that's enough. I would say just don't be afraid to try. Like whatever idea kind of pops into your head. If you think that you have a good idea, go with it. And if it's not a good idea, you'll find out later. But if it is a good idea, people are going to rally around you. Um, sort of off of Eric's mantra of do good and have a good time, um, just find something that you're passionate about and just pursue it. You know, um, as far as the environment goes, I'm really passionate about you know conserving. Um, native species around the area. So I'm actually going to be working with a professor next year from the university on tall grass prairie restoration. Um, and I'm getting school credit for it, but it's just a lot of fun. You know, um, If you find something that you can really care about and really be passionate about, um, you'll do good and have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yes, I would like to give a few insights from the Filipino perspectives, and I guess I can be corrected with my very own idea. 